All right, greetings class. Lesson 14.2, your daily math lesson of the day. All right, so we are working on scatter plots, if you remember. But now we're going to work on something called trend lines, um, specifically trend lines and then the predictions that you can make with trend lines. The essential question is, how can you use excuse me, a trend line to make a prediction from a scatter plot? So let me make it real clear. What's a trend line? Um, well, it says it right here. A trend line is a straight line that comes closest to the points on a scatter plot. But basically what a trend line is, another way of saying it, is a line that basically matches the data. So um, what I'm going to do here is, for this uh, example, is we're going to actually go ahead and plot these points on the coordinate plane. And after we've plotted those points, we're going to try and create a line that gets really close to matching all the data. Now we know that it, most of the time data isn't just a, in a perfectly straight line. A lot of times it's kind of scattered all over the place. So we're likely not going to be able to hit every single point, but the idea with the trend line is to get as close as you possibly can. All right, so let's get started. So um, here we have distance in miles and time in minutes. So this is Joyce's running data. Okay, so four miles is 38 minutes. So four miles in 38 minutes, that's right there. Um, two miles in 25 minutes, so that's two miles, 25 minutes, right there. One mile in seven minutes, that's about there. Two miles in 16 minutes, so that's about there. 3 miles in 26 minutes, so that's about here. Already we can see this isn't in a straight line. We've got this point that's kind of weird off here. 5 miles in 55 minutes, so that's right here. 2 miles in 20 minutes, that's here. 4 miles in 45 minutes, right here. And lastly, 3 miles in 31 minutes, so 3 miles in 31 minutes. So this is clearly not a straight line, but um, we should be able to get pretty close. So how are we going to do this? Well, obviously it makes a whole lot of sense to start at 0, 0 to start at the origin, because obviously um, it, if you've only ran for 0 minutes, if you haven't run any minutes at all, you're not going to go any distance. So it wouldn't make sense to start my line like up here at 0, 10 because that would imply that it took me 10 minutes to run zero miles. And I obviously wouldn't want to start my line here at like one zero, because that would imply that I ran one mile in zero minutes, both of which would be kind of silly. All right, so I'm going to start at zero, zero, and then I'm going to kind of just see where my line would be that kind of uh, matches it the best. And the idea is you kind of want to try to get the same amount of points above as below. So I've got this point's on the line, that point's on the line, and then I've got one, two, three above, and one, two, excuse me, four, three, four of below. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to call it that. And there I go. That's my trend line. Nice. And obviously that extends outward. All right, cool. So that's part A. So I, or sorry, part A and I think the next part too. So I made the scatter plot. And that first, those blue points were the scatter plot, and then I added the trend line. So to draw a trend line, use a straight edge. And then it says, finally says, use your trend line to predict how long it would take Joycey to run 4.5 miles. Okay, so this is where the prediction part comes from. So it says trend lines and predictions. Okay, so I want to predict how long it will take Joycey to run 4.5 miles. Well, in order to do that, I just have to find... Um, 4.5 on the x-axis because that implies f that's 4.5 miles and then go up and see where that hits my trend line and that's right there and so that would potentially be a point of 4.5 and then the y-axis time in minutes is 45. Cool. So the idea there is that it, this trend line predicts that it would take Joycey 45 minutes to run 4.5 miles. Um, cool. And that's it. That's the whole shebang right there. That's basically what we do with trend lines. That's how we make predictions. And that's the basic idea. Okay, so we first plot our data. Then we find a line that matches the data as closely as possible with generally as much above and below as we possibly can. And whenever we're doing that, we want to forget about outliers. So like, let's say I had some crazy point like 
up here. Well, I don't know. Maybe Joycey was just like really tired that day and only ran two and a half miles and it took her a whole hour. You know, we don't want to think about this point when we're creating a trend line because that point's going to pull our trend line way off. Um, so we, this right here, if we remember, is called an outlier. And so I don't want to consider outliers. I don't want to consider outliers when making my trend line. Okay, so it exists, but I'm not going to consider it. I'm just going to consider the, the points that are not outliers, so all the rest of them. So that's pretty much it. How well does your trend line fit the data? Fits pretty well. More, they're about the same amount above and below, and it's even some points were right on the trend line. Do you think you can use a scatter plot that shows no association to make a prediction? Explain your answer. Okay, so this is a great question. If I've got a scatter plot with no association, so what would that be like? Let me just say, let's say that instead of this data, I had a bunch of data that was just like here, 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 just all over the place. Well, I can't really fit a trend line to this because you could imagine like a line like that might work or maybe a line like that or maybe even a line like that. So because it's got no association where the data is all over the place, I can't create a trend line and therefore I can't make a prediction. Okay, if there's no association, the idea means that there's no relationship between one variable and the other. So like I said, it could be like length of hair and, um, you know, scores on uh, like a IQ test or something. I don't think your hair length has anything to do with your IQ. So you'd see people with long hair scoring high and some people with long hair scoring low. There's no association. So it's not like you could say, oh, if your hair is this long, you're going to get this score on the IQ test. No. I mean, that would be rather arbitrary. So that's that's the idea there. If there's no association, you cannot make a prediction. Um, Okay, so here we go. Finding the equation of a trend line. So now this works through an example, and all this is doing is it says, okay, you've got a scatter plot, you've got a trend line, and now I want to find the equation of it. And we use slope intercept form y equals mx plus b. And the first thing that we do, if you remember, is we find the slope. So we take two points. So they use 550 and 17170. Okay, so I can see 550, yeah, sure, and 17. 17170 is right on there and says, oh, the line passes through these two points. Okay. Well, if I know that it passes through those two points, I can use that for x1, y1, x2, y2, plug it in, find the slope. Then once I've found the slope, all I have to do is then plug in a point. So they plug in 10 for m, and then they use this point 550 and plug in 5 for x and 50 for y. And then they simplify, they get 50 equals 50 plus b subtract 50 from both sides, and they get b equals 0. Therefore, plugging in 10 for slope and 0 for b, you get y equals 10x. And the whole slope there is 10x. Now remember, you can just tell the y-intercept b is 0, so you don't really have to solve for that in this one, because you could just see that b is 0 in this case. Um, but you always want to be careful, generally speaking, um, when you're solving for the equations, just to be sure. But Clearly b is 0 there, and the slope is 10. Now the question um, then is, uh, what does that mean? Okay, so what does it mean that the y-intercept is 0? Well, that means that when, um, if you've read 0 chapters, uh, then you've read 0 pages. Okay, that makes sense that the y-intercept is 0. But what about the slope being 10? Well, remember slope is the y-axis, the rise over the run the x-axis. So in this case, it would be pages over chapters. So another way to think about it would be a rate, pages per chapter. So a slope of 10 here means there are, on average, 10 pages per chapter. So if I have two chapters, it'll be 20. If I have six chapters, it'll be 60. If I have 10 chapters, it'll be 100. Okay, cool, yeah. So that's the idea there. Um, it's 10 pages per chapter. That's what that slope of 10 means in this case. Um, what type of association clearly had positive? What's the meaning of the slope? It's 10 pages per chapter. What's the meaning of the y-intercept? We already talked about that. Y-intercept meant that um, if you read zero chapters, there were zero pages. Okay, so let's now move on to this example. Your turn. All right. So bringing this in, whoops, don't need to rotate it. 
Um, the scatter plot and trend lines show the relationship between the number of rainy days in a month and the number of umbrellas sold each month. Write the equation for the trend line. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and skip a step and just say, hey, I'm smart. B is equal to zero. All right. So remember, <clears throat> we're going to start with y equals mx plus b. Um, and usually the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to solve for the slope, but I already know that b is equal to zero, so I'm just going to eliminate that and just say y equals mx plus zero or just y equals mx. Now to find the slope, I do m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now you can see that it intersects the origins. So the first point that I'm going to use is 0, 0. And that can be my x1, y1. And then I just have to scan until I find a good point um, on the, the graph. So where is there a nice point on the graph? And generally speaking, it's better to find a point that's further away because you'll be more accurate. So that point looks really good right there. And that point is just 10, um, 9. So 10, 9. So that'll be my x2, y2. So my slope then is y2, which is 9, minus y1, which is 0, over x2, which is 10, minus x1, which is 0, or just 9 tenths. So therefore, now that I have my slope, and I already have my y-intercept, I just say y equals 9 tenths x. Okay. Now, let's say I still had my b in there because I didn't just assume that b was equal to 0 by looking at the graph. Well, what I'd then have to do is I'd have to take one of my points, um, like 10, 9, and plug in for x and y. So I'd take 10 and plug it in for x, and 9 and plug it in for y. And so what would that look like? I'd plug in 9 for y, so I'd get 9 equals 9 tenths, and then plug in 10 for x, so 10 plus b. These tens would cancel out. I'd get 9 equals 9 plus b. Subtract 9 from both sides, and I'd get b equals 0. So that's what I ended up with anyway. So my final answer here is y equals, or let me write it here, y equals 9 tenths x. That's my final answer. Cool. All right, moving forward. Explore activity two. Um, when you use a trend line or its equations to predict a value between data points that you already know, you interpolate the predictive value. When you make a prediction that's outside of the data you know, you extrapolate. Okay, so what is this talking about here? Interpolation versus extrapolation. Well, let's go back. Um, Let's go back to this one here. So interpolation, interpolation, say that with me, interpolation. Interpolation is when you make a prediction about the inside. So um, when you make a prediction about data points, that would be between other data points. So let's say I wanted to make a prediction about how many pages there would be in six chapters. Well, that would be an interpolation because it's between this da these data points and these data points. So this would be interpolation. So if I wanted to predict how many pages there would be in a book with six chapters, that's interpolation. And I'd say, oh, it comes out with 60 based on my trend line. But what if I wanted to make a prediction based on something with, um, Let's say this would be what, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Let's say I wanted to um, make a prediction based on this. Well, this is outside of my range because all these data points are to the left of this data point. So this is then called extrapolation. Extra usually means beyond. Okay, so extrapolation um, means you're. Um, making a guess or making a prediction beyond or outside of the range of your current set of data. And so I would say, okay, at 22 chapters, I'll probably have 220 pages based on my trend line. So interpolation is when you're inside of the data, and extrapolation is when you're outside of your data range. Cool. Awesome. So in this case, they say, extrapolation would be a book with 26 chapters and we remember y equals 10x so it would be y equals 10 times 26 or 260 pages 
for 26 chapters. Um, predict how many pages would be in a book with 14 chapters. Well, 14 chapters is interpolation because 14 is inside the range and I'd predict it would have 140 pages because 10 times 14 is 140. Do you think that extrapolation or interpolation is more accurate? Well, that's a good question. Think about it maybe. Pause the video. Okay, so interpolation is generally more accurate and so let me give you an example of this, okay? Um, let's say um, let's say I have a set of data that talks about how long it takes for a group of cats to eat all of the food in a dish, right? And so let's make my graph. And, okay, here is number of cats. Number of cats, not cats, number of cats. And this would be time. Okay, so, you know, one cat, two cats, three cats, four cats. I've got a limited number of food in my dish, right? So let's say I've got a couple of data points, and then my time, I'd say 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, something like that, okay? Well, one, let's say I've got a data point, and say it takes one cat, you know, 50 minutes to eat all the food. And it takes three cats, like, you know, um, I don't know, 30 minutes. And it takes five cats, like tw 15 minutes or something, based on my data. And so I'd fit a trend line, and I'd say, okay, let me actually use my ruler tool so it's nice and straight. Um, so I'd fit a trend line and I'd see I've got what kind of association? Oh, negative association here. Got a negative association here because obviously um, as the number of cats um, goes up, the um, time it will take will go down for them to eat the food. Okay, so in this case, um, I've got my line here. And so interpolation would probably be pretty accurate here. So if like, I want to say, okay, well, how long will it take for two cats to eat? Well, that would be interpolation. It'd be like, oh, it'll take 40 minutes. And how long will it take for four cats to eat? It'd be like, oh, it would take about 20 minutes. But like, as I keep going, obviously, this is going to become... Um, a whole different story. And maybe, you know, if I have more than, like if you could see this looks like at six cats or seven cats, it takes zero minutes to eat the food, which like might be fairly accurate. But what if like when you have a group of like 20 cats, instead of it taking zero minutes, it like takes way longer because they all start fighting each other or something. I mean, that's horrible to think about, but like, you know, that's extrapolation. So when you're extrapolating something, generally speaking, there's things that might there's variables and things that might you might not be taking into account with your data set that if you extrapolate it out, like if you have way more cats, there may be issues. Maybe maybe all the cats don't eat the food at all because they decide to go and have a cat party and just hang out with each other because they have so many cats. You know, you don't know if the cats are going to have a cat party out here and you don't have any data about that many cats hanging out together. So what are you going to do? You're extrapolating and your extrapolation is going to be really inaccurate. Whereas your interpolation is probably going to be fairly accurate. Okay, so generally speaking, interpolation is more accurate than extrapolation. All right, so this is where we get into guided practice. Um, and this is basically your homework, but I'm going to go through just this one bit um, to see uh, what we can do here. All right, so... Angela recorded the price of different weights of several bulk grains. She made a scatter plot of her data. Use a scatter plot for one through four. Draw a trend line. Okay, I can do that. Um, again, here it's going to make sense to start at the origin and then find a good enough trend line where the same amount are above and below. That looks pretty good. Maybe here, sure. Okay, boom. Got my trend line. Nice. How do you know whether your trend line is a good fit for the data? You just count the points above one, two, three, and the points below one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, remember, this is kind of an outlier, so maybe I shouldn't have taken that into account. But either way, this is still a pretty good trend line. Um, I wouldn't 
be mad at this trend line because again I've got you know just about the same amount of points above as below okay so this really isn't that bad of an outlier but it might be considered an outlier depending upon which measure you use okay so same amount of points above as below um, not really including outliers writing an equation for your trend line okay again look B equals zero awesome then I'm gonna use let's see I'm gonna find a point Oh, here's a nice one um, this would be what um, 14 18 so this is 20 and 1.8 so I'm gonna use that as my x2 y2 and for my x1 y1 I'm gonna use 0 0 so the first thing I want to do is find my slope so m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 equals 1.8 minus 0 over 20 minus 0 equals 1.8 over 20 okay so here you're gonna I would do the long division just to help myself out I move the decimal place here so that becomes there and then instead of 20 I move the decimal place over 1 it's 200 so um, 18 divided by 200 200 doesn't go into 18 it doesn't um, even go into um, 180 so I need to bring another 0 that'd be 0 there it goes into 1800 nine times okay so um, if you're doing this division um, decimal divided by 20 that ends up as 0 0.09 now there's actually a better way to do this okay now the way that I want to do this is I want to get this in terms of a fraction um, that um, I can simplify okay so um, in order to do this like if I want to get this in terms of a fraction I want to think what do I multiply by this by to make it a whole number and you might be able to say okay well if I multiply it by 5 it's going to be 5 times 1.8 is 9 so if I multiply this fraction 1.8 over 20 if I multiply that by 5 over 5 it's going to be 9 over 100 and there you go and so my slope is 9 over 100 so it's interesting right usually we simplify fractions by dividing by something but when I have a decimal I can um, multiply now the easiest way to do this I'm sorry not 200 but 20 is actually just to multiply it by a 1 like by 10 because that'll move my decimal place over once that'll be 18 over 200 and then I say oh can I simplify that yeah it's both divisible by 2 so that then becomes 9 over 100 all right so that's the easier way to do it like if if I have just 1.8 I multiply by 10 over 10 if I had like 1.36 over 10 I would multiply this by 100 over 100 because that would move the decimal place over twice I'd get 136 over 1000 and then I'd simplify that that would become what 68 over 500 and then 34 over 250 and then 17 over 125 okay so anyhow that's just a thing of simplifying fractions with decimals in the numerator or the denominator for that matter so my slope is 9 over 100 so I end up with y equals 9 over 100 X plus B but B is 0 use the equation for your trend line to interpolate the price of 7 ounces and extrapolate the price of 50 ounces so the ounces is the x-axis so for 7 ounces I would just do y equals 9 over 100 times 7 which is 36 over 100 which is 0 0.36 and this is in dollars so it would be you know 36 cents or 0 0.36 dollars and then extrapolating for 50 it would be 9 over 100 times 50 and I could do 50 times 9 over 100 but I know 50 over 100 is 2 um, I'm sorry uh, if I cross that 50 out and then take 50 away from there it becomes 2 so that becomes 9 over 2 or 4.5 okay so for 50 ounces it's four dollars and fifty cents there you go um, and then if I want to check I could check okay 7.36 that should come up so 7 um, 0.36 that's completely wrong how did I manage that 
20 over 1.8 over 20. Hmm. Did I do something wrong? Oh, psh. it's not 36. 7 times 9 is not 36, it's 63. This should have been 63 cents. Sorry. So this would not be 0 0.36, it would be 0 0.63. So that was good that I checked. So I find 7 is here and 63. Yeah, that's a pretty good estimate. Boom. And then doing 50 ounces is harder because it would be way out here and then way up there. So way off the graph. So it'd be harder to check that. Um, but there you go. That's how you do it. Um, now, I'm not going to go through the rest of these because this is obviously going to be similar to your homework. Um, let me just take one look at number five. A trend line passes through two points on a scatter plot. How can you use the trend line to make a prediction between or outside the given data points? Um, you just plug in a value for x, and then you get the value for y. Um, it's simple as that. Interpolation is between the given data points. Extrapolation is outside. So just to be clear, between is interpolation, outside is extrapolation. All right, that is it. So you guys have homework to do. Um, I am going to be giving you guys a project, so look out for that in the next video. We're not going to jump straight to the test, obviously. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a project to do on trend lines, so look out for that. That'll be the next video. Until then, that is it for me for now. Enjoy mathematics.